Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Altenew Metallic Watercolors. Uh, these were sent to me by Altenew. I participated in their um, blog hop, but I did not do the video at that time. I did still want to share it with you guys. So um, opening it up, there are, what is there, 14 colors, I think? Yeah, 14 colors, um, and then it comes with a water brush. Um, they do, are they're removable, they come out, and then it opens up so you have like the mixing paint palettes. Um, this is just regular black cardstock. This is not watercolor paper, but I just kind of wanted to swatch the colors to see what they would look like. Um, I knew 100% that I was going to be doing a project on black paper. I just prefer um, metallics on black. They show up so much differently than uh, they do on, you know, just regular white paper. Um, so I'm just going to go through here and swatch these. Now the reason that I'm not using the aqua brush that comes in the set is just user error, to be quite honest. I'm not good with water brushes. I never really have been. Um, I get impatient and then I get too much water and then I'm scared to, <laughs> to push on it so then I don't have enough water. Um, so I just find that I work better with a paintbrush. So I'm just going to kind of label these as I go um, with just a white gel pen to show up on that black cardstock. And then I actually trimmed this down um, to fit inside so that I could keep it uh, for any other times that I want to pull it out so I know what the colors already look like. Um, I really enjoyed using these. They were super simple to use and they were very, very shimmery, um, just super pretty. A uh, lot of different color variations, which I love because then like, you know, you buy the one thing and then you're pretty much set. Um, I haven't really used any of the other. There's a lot of other metallics out there. I know Christina Warner has used a ton of different ones. I have not really toyed around with too many of them, um, but I did really enjoy these ones. This purple that I'm about to put down here is amazing. Same thing with the um, blue that'll start the next set. So I actually found my inspiration for this card on um, Pinterest and the picture that I saw was a monogram um, that was just, it was super clean, um, it was like squared out and had some flowers around it and I just really loved the way that it looked and I figured that I could kind of recreate the same look but with a sentiment in the center instead of um, a monogram. So that is what I did. I really like the way the card came out. Um, you guys can let me know which you think of course in the uh, in the comments below. Um, but then once this is done I'm going to go ahead and move on to the um, you know, the actual project, uh, which for me was florals because I love florals and I especially love Altenew florals. Um, so I missed the boat on the release of this as far as, um, like, you know, sales or anything like that. But, you know, maybe, maybe we'll catch the, the Black Friday sales if this one is on sale. I really don't know if it will be or not. Um, so yeah, that is that. And then we're just gonna, um, move on, you know, clean this up, scoot it over uh, so that I can do the stamping. So I've picked two of the, um, these are actually from the same set, the so they're the same style of roses, and I just positioned them in a way that would cover the top half of my landscape card. So that way I didn't have to like stamp it once and then stamp it again. Um, but I do want to block out that square so that square is clean. So I'm laying these down and then I'm trying to find the center of it for my sentiment. Um, I did not go about this the best way, to be quite honest. Uh, I should have tried to find the center of it before I put my um, other stamps on there, but I'm really just trying to find the center. That's all I'm doing so that I can mask it off with a square. Don't mind my crazy hair. I'm not really sure what was going on with my hair day this particular day. So here I just have a um, post-it that I've cut into a square for some reason, and I don't know why. I could not find my masking paper. Um, so I'm improvising with a post-it, which is what I used to use before I had fancy masking paper, and it will work just fine. So here I'm trying to see if I can stick it to um, the, like if I can get the 
posted to stick where I want it just like with the stamps but because the stamps are so sticky this totally did not work I told you I didn't go about it the best way and I'm just showing you all of the things that are so here um just again trying to find the center of that card so that I can get the sentiment where I want it once I have that square in place I'm actually going to outline it with a white gel pen um, I will be going back over this square um, later on after everything is done but this is just going to give me a general idea of where I need to stamp my sentiment before I get in there and do my coloring. So I'm going to leave that mask in place while I do my stamping. I am going to be just doing some white heat embossing um, right over top of this so I have that stark contrast on the black. Uh, so treat that with my anti-static tool and then I'm going to stamp this in clear and then heat set it in white. So this is, well it's not a short video but it is a little bit shorter for me so I am going to try to have a story time and, <laughs> and talk to you about the card. I don't know how well it's going to go, I'm going to try. So I told you all that we have purchased a home and in the purchasing of the home once we got the keys we had to go over there and clean everything um you know basically i told eric i said i'm cleaning her kids dirty handprints off of this door so that my kid can make his own dirty handprints which is pretty much how it is after you stamp this you want to make sure you remove the mask um, so you don't have any embossing powder that gets on that and then depending upon what you've used um, for your mask it may leave behind a little bit of stick um, so just be prepared to clean that up so that your square stays super clean. Um, I use a paintbrush or um, if it's more detailed you'll see when I do the sentiment later um, I use a craft pick. So the, the paintbrush is much easier to do larger areas where you're not really going to be going in between those details. Um, but if you're doing smaller areas, I really do like the, the Tim Holtz craft pick to get those individual little like granules of embossing powder. So anyway, we went over and cleaned and what day was that? It was a Sunday. So we went over and cleaned. Um, and then in between that, I went over and, uh, picked up peanut. He came back to the house, cleaned, painted all that stuff. It was a super, super long day. We were so exhausted. So Eric stays there to finish putting the second coat of paint in uh, Peanut's room. We just did an accent wall in there. We figured it would be easier to paint before we moved, you know, everything in. Um, and I brought Peanut home, get him showered, um, all that stuff, and, and get him ready for bed, which I am successful at. Eric gets finished what he's doing, comes back over, we're sitting on the couch chatting, uh, you know, with the dogs and, and all that jazz. And um, at some point, I'm like laying on the couch, he decides he's going to lay on the floor. And um, typically, uh, Eric does not spend the night here if Nathan is here. Um, I just... I, I just feel like it kind of sets a bad example um you know when later on when Nathan becomes older um I don't want him to be like well why can't I have sleepovers you and Eric did know what I'm saying it's just a it's just a parenting decision so typically he he does not spend the night um but so both of us now and also at night Emma gets crated because she can't be trusted um she chews everything all the things every single thing because she's a puppy. So um, the dogs had been over at the new house with us because it's fenced in. So they had been running around and playing and, and getting all kinds of love from all kinds of people because um, my mom and my sister were over and then Eric's parents came out and everybody was helping us, you know, clean and do things. And um, so we end up falling asleep. Now Molly is laying on top of my legs. I fall asleep. He falls asleep on the floor. At some point, Emma comes, she is sleeping on the um the love seat and at some point she also uh comes over and lays on top of me so I pretty much had a dog blanket I had Emma laying on my chest and Molly laying on my feet and Eric is by himself on the floor which this particular house is a slab house and because it's a rental there is not a lot of padding it's not great carpet he's pretty much sleeping on concrete so there's that so in order to prep these watercolors, sorry, we got to go back. I did just put a drop in each pan because I wasn't really sure what colors I was going to use. And again, I am not working on watercolor paper. I want to be very clear here. 
um, which means they are going to react very differently. Watercolor paper is designed to be thicker and have a special coating so that it can take more moisture. Because I'm not working on watercolor paper, these pigments are not going to move the same way and I needed to work with substantially less water just so you guys understand where I'm at. They do have darker color watercolor paper, but I don't own it and I wanted to use them on black anyway. So I made the adjustments. What I'm doing is I am putting down one layer um, of the pink. Um, I think it's like a, I think they call it, it's a quartz color. I, I'm, it's the, the lighter pink. And then I went in um, with the darker red to add just a little bit of shading uh, where it would be the, um, where the shading would be. So where the petals would be meeting or folded over or anything like that. Um, you'll see, I'm doing it from afar here so you can see the colors that I'm using. So you can see the palette, but eventually I am going to go ahead and zoom in, um, so that you can see the actual painting portion and, um, just how they go on. So anyway, we end up falling asleep. At two o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I try to wake him up. He not even move. I'm covered in dogs. I'm also exhausted. I end up falling back asleep. I think I tried again at around four. Um, and then that was about it. Because if I got up off the couch, then I'm moving the dogs. The dogs are going to be on top of him. It's It would have been a disaster. And it didn't really take me that long to fall back asleep, honestly. It's not like I even had to try. <laughs> um, so we wake up to Peanut getting up in the morning, like why y'all sleep in in the same clothes you were wearing last night on the couch with the dogs. Now, thankfully, Emma did not get up and get into hijinks. She just slept on the couch, probably because she was so exhausted from all of the running around and extra plays and loves that she was getting. Um, so we get up. I'm you know, we're, I explained to Peanut, listen, you know, we fell asleep. It is what it is. Um, and so we, <laughs> we are going about like our regular routine of, you know, breakfast and teeth brushing and potty and, and all of that. Um, so that Peanut can get to school in a timely fashion. So we're doing all those things, feed the dogs, get them, you know, outside to go potty, all of that stuff. And like just your regular, you know, morning routine, except now we got Eric's in the mix. Um, and so we were getting ready to leave for school. And as we're getting ready to leave for school, I'm like, oh my word, I did not even pack your lunch. Now, when I was making his breakfast, he wanted oatmeal and pears. So while I was doing that, while the oatmeal was was cooling off, I think, I he still eats his, he doesn't like fruit with the skin on it unless he is like eating an apple, like the whole thing. But if it's cut up, he wants the skin taken off of it. So I had peeled the entirety of the pear. I had cut the entire pear up and then I gave him half for breakfast and I put the other half in a bag for his lunch. Now, so it, like my brain was working at some point or another. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, we're getting ready to leave. I never packed your lunch, like mom of the year here. And so I'm getting his stuff together um, for his lunch, yogurt, wa you know, filling his little water bottle, all that jazz. And I'm like, where are these pears? Where are the pears? I can't find the pears. So I say to Eric, I, do you know where his pears are? I cannot find them. And he goes, I think you threw them away. And I'm like, what? Why would I do that? And I look into the trash can and sure enough, in the trash can is the Ziploc bag that contains the pears. However, I now do not have enough time because I didn't realize that I never packed his lunch. I don't have enough time to make new pears. Um, so I pull the the trash pears out of the garbage can and I'm just going to transfer them into a new bag um, because the pears are fine. They've been protected. They're in a Ziploc bag. I just need to put them in a new bag that, you know, wasn't in the trash. 
So Eric and I are laughing hysterically over the fact that I'm about to send my kid to school with trash pears. And Nathan hears me <laughs> call them trash pears. And then he's singing to himself about how he's taking trash pears for lunch. And I'm like, this is delightful. He's going to get to school. And these people are going to be like, his mama sent him to school with trash pears. Which I did because I didn't have any other choice. Um, so I got those out of one Ziploc bag into a clean Ziploc bag. And then, you know, took him to school to have a normal, uh, a semi-normal day anyway. <laughs> um, so it's just been a lot with the packing and the cleaning and all of that stuff. It's pretty exhausting. Um, at the end of this week, we will be done with all of it though. And that will be glorious. That will be so wonderful to just have that part of it over. So I did use two types of greens, um, even though it is hard to tell because they are so beautiful and shimmery. Um, I used a lighter and then a darker for the shading, same as before. I'm going to use the, um, the darker red for the berries in the top left hand side there, um, just so that everything kind of stays cohesive. Um, just going to drop those in. I didn't add any shading to these. This is just the, the natural unadulterated watercolor. Um, and then I thought that it needed a little bit of something. So I'm actually um, going to put this little mask back in place and then do a couple of little spatters of the green that I used on the leaves. It's the lighter color green. I did have to... Um, add a little bit more water because I told you this isn't watercolor paper so I was using a pretty thick concentration of the paint um, but in order to get it to splatter I did have to add some water to it um, but then this is this is pretty much it um, I am going to go back and just kind of bold up that outline in the center I told you I was going to go back over that just to make sure um, that that is I guess the same thing thickness the same width as the um, stamps and that they are uh, you know it's going to stand out from the heat embossing um, it's not going to be raised or anything but at least it like it being a little bit bolder makes it stand out a little bit more um, these did dry relatively quickly they were just as shimmery when they were dry as they were when they were wet um, and so like you can see like that right hand side flower is almost completely blotted out because of the shine on the desk. Um, but I really did like them. I would recommend them. And then that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will have another video later this week and I will see you then. Bye.